I don't fully understand what goes on with that, but I know that God calls us in community to pray for one another. And even if you don't know somebody, there's a blessing and benefit. How many of you get that? A lot of times when we come in to worship together, we're kind of dialed into what it is we need. Got to get our coffee, got to get our stuff, got to get everything lined up, get the kids or whatever it is. And we forget that this is about we're in this together. And there's something that happens when we pray for somebody else that gets us out of just being totally self-absorbed. That's a good thing. That's really the nature of the love of Jesus. So I want to begin the message today just by asking this question. If you were to even to go on and Google, do you have fractured relationships in your life? If you were just wondering, what, is a f- what does it say on the internet about fractured relationships? And say you pulled up a page that was like WebMD, and you know, it just listed the symptoms. Some of you have done this before with medical things. Oh, come on. Seriously? Okay. And, and so, symptoms of fractured relationships. Do you experience one or more of these symptoms? Do you feel overscheduled, overinformed, and overwhelmed? Your relationships tend to be a mile wide and a few inches deep. One of your primary sources of affirmation is social media. See, it went off right then. You just got a post. It just came through right then. That was perfect timing. One of the symptoms is you may be smiling on the outside, but deep inside you feel shame and guilt. You feel unseen and unnoticed by other people in terms of who you really are. You have a short fuse and or you're prone to bouts of depression. You struggle with addiction as a way to numb the pain and emptiness. You have a hard time really feeling what other people feel, being truly with them. Empathy is like a, it's a lost art. It's something that you hear about, but you just can't really connect with. If you have one or more of those symptoms, it may be because of fractured relationships and being broken. But onto this scene comes Jesus, who actually is the great physician. And he has a great prescription. He says, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. He says, blessed are those who feel desperate and insignificant for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Jesus says, I came to set free those who are bruised and crushed by tragedy. He says, follow me and I'll teach you a new way of living, how to heal fractures instead of making them worse. I came so that you could have life indeed, so that you could live life to the fullest. Those are all things Jesus says. So the prescription is Jesus and his words and his life, the healer, no matter what the symptoms are that you have. We're studying this amazing message of Jesus called the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5 through 7. And every week I'm encouraging you to read ahead and in this message of Jesus. It's it's the longest recorded message that we have of Jesus. And remember, whenever we look at a message that Jesus taught in the Bible, these are similar things that Jesus taught all over the place as he was traveling around Palestine. He was speaking similar messages. That's why you have different little alterations in the account or something that was said in one of the gospel accounts as compared to another one is because Jesus was speaking these same messages all the time. And in Matthew 5 through 7, we're looking specifically at this uh, through the window, if you will, looking into this room in terms of how Jesus calls us to heal relationships and to have whole relationships. Remember, he calls us to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbors as ourselves. Last week we talked about being a peacemaker and what that means. And today we're going to talk about the fracture of anger and offense. How many of you have experienced, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you have experienced being fractured in relationships because of anger and offense? And even when you think about a certain person, that's your reference point. 
It's that person you're thinking of right now. <laughs> Anger and offense, fracture that comes, fractured relationships. And we're going to watch a clip from the Lumo Project. This is one of our favorites that portrays the life of Jesus. And this is the portrayal of him, of this actual story, Matthew 5, 21 through 26. And I love the way they portrayed this. I don't know if this is exactly what Jesus did, probably not exactly, but it's just a beautiful picture. And I want you to pay attention to this and think of this as though you were there. You're one of the characters that is in this story and you're watching Jesus talk about anger. You're watching Jesus talk about and redefine what God really thinks about relationships and how to mend fractures when it comes to anger and offense. And there's this beautiful picture that's painted. And then we're going to come back to this and, and talk about it more. But I, I, I really want to encourage you to prayerfully put yourself in the story and pay attention to what Jesus does in speaking and then in personally engaging in this conflict between two young boys. Let's go ahead and watch. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still together on the way, or your adversary may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. What a powerful picture. You know, when I first saw this a couple days ago, I was so hit with those two boys, and thinking what it would have been like to be one of them. Hearing Jesus talk about anger and offense when you're fighting, there's conflict. That the rest of your life, every time you got into conflict, you would remember Jesus putting his hand on your heart. Pause. You would remember Jesus putting his hand on the other person's heart. You would remember Jesus then like lovingly pulling you to himself and then calling you to make things right and bringing you together. See, that's the beauty of it. Peacemaking and reconciling is a, is a beautiful thing, but we really can't do it in our own strength. Would you agree with that? We need help. We need him. Can you imagine? And what is, and just think about that. What is it that jumped out at you? And just, what is it about this scene of Jesus calling us to reconcile and to not carry this anger and offense and the fracture, not letting that develop further, but to reconcile? What a powerful picture. And I think sometimes it's as simple as this. Jesus, you're thinking about the person that you may be wrestling with or who's angry with you. And it's as simple as this. Jesus is just saying, will you just come to me and let me put my hand on you? And you might be there and you might be really angry and going, well, I, um, as long as I see you put your hand on them, and I don't mean in a nice way. <laughs> right? Right? 
It's as simple as Jesus. Just, just see, some, for some reason, we make it so complicated, right? And we go, yeah, but you don't know the fight that I've been in. You don't know what's happened to me. You don't know what, and you know, I didn't mean to do that. I don't know why they're still upset about that. The only way we're going to experience real transformation in our lives to become more like Jesus is if we encounter Jesus with who we really are, where we're really at. Jesus puts his hand on your heart. He tells you to reconcile. He embraces both of you and he pulls you near to his heart. The fracture brings anger and offense. Jesus says we need to heal the fracture by reconciling now. And if you learn this practice, you'll keep fractures from getting worse and bring healing. So I want to look at some of the phrases in this. Just to bring some emphasis again to the specific words that Jesus used. By the way, he uses two words for anger in the original language, in the Greek, in which this is written. And they speak of two different kinds of anger. You know, it's amazing. A lot of times we think, eh, that applies to other people and doesn't apply to us. And then when we really read God's word, it's like it kind of circles around us and brings us in, right? And includes all of it. We go, oh, I don't have that. But he goes, oh, no, but you got this. Two different types of anger here in the scripture. One is the kind of anger that it's, it's impulsive. It's like setting a piece of paper on fire. And it's just... Anybody know that kind of anger? It's just like people that walk around and it's like, they're just immediately, they're like a torch that's like, has so much fuel in it. If there's even just a spark within a few feet of it, it ignites. Have you driven in Denver lately? <laughs> and the second type of anger is this more, this simmering anger, this longer term anger. It's this anger he's referring to when you would have contempt for and insult your brother, calling them a name. And this is not some sort of impulsive, you idiot. This is an ongoing anger that's like simmering. It's always on the back burner and you just have this, this just sense of contempt for the other person. You just dislike them. And so you have resorted to even having a name for them, just insulting them. And Jesus says that you're not only guilty if you commit murder, you're guilty if you have these kinds of anger and let them go. So when we look at verse 23, which is where we're going to spend our time this morning, 23 and 24, he says, so if you're offering your gift at the altar, or therefore it's translated. So in other words, this is connected with what he just said about anger. So he said, so if you're offering your gift at the altar, verse 23, so by the way, offering your gift at the altar, Jesus assumes that this is a normal practice for people who follow God. Is that we regularly worship, and we regularly come, and we regularly give an offering. That's part of worship. We come and we offer ourselves to God in worship, right? Body, soul, and spirit. We offer our minds to God, we offer our thoughts to God, we offer who we are, and we also bring offerings out of gratitude for his provision. And he's just assuming here, by the way, that we're going to come to the altar, we're going to come to God's presence, and we're going to just present an offering just as a part of our worship. And this could be used of any spiritual practice in following Jesus. Whenever you come and you're reading your Bible, and there you remember... Right. Or whenever you come and you're doing like the first five, last five, and there you remember that your brother has something against you. Or whenever you pray the Lord's Prayer, and there you remember. Or whenever you show up for your small group, or whenever you show up to serve, and there you remember. Anything that's designated is kind of like an act that, that we're serving God and offering ourselves to him. And in this case, he's talking about giving our offerings. He says, and there remember, 
Everybody say, and there remember. This word is a rich word, and it means to be mindful of. It means that this comes to mind. And I believe this is how God speaks in our life. We come into a place of worship, and there we remember. And sometimes it's a troubling thought. It's a person who has something against us. We remember when we come to worship, and you think, this is the last place I want to think about them, right? This is how God speaks. He'll bring someone to mind. There's a fractured relationship. And so we come into his presence and God's agenda for you and for me and for all of us is to be healed in our relationships. So he brings this to mind in the place of worship. And we're like, how many of you have experienced this before? That whenever it's like you try to press in with Jesus, junk comes up. Sometimes that's the very sign that you're getting close to God. Because he loves you and what's in you starts to come to the surface so that he can deal with that and love you fully. It's a beautiful thing. Notice he doesn't say, and there remember somebody you're upset at. He says it's he even kind of turns this on its head and says, there you remember somebody who has something against you. The fracture is in them. So what is Jesus saying to you today? If you want healthy relationships, don't let anger find a place to hide or boil in your heart. Don't let anger find expression through insult or contempt. Remember, be mindful, be thoughtful. It's amazing what can happen when we take a step to go and make things right. Okay, we'll show you a funny clip this morning. At least funny to me. Didn't think you were going to come and see a clip from Billy Madison this morning, but this is a good reminder and almost a, in a humorous way of what can happen when we take initiative with somebody that has been hurt by us or offended by us. So let's go ahead and watch this little clip. Hello? Hi, is this Danny McGrath? Yeah. The Danny McGrath that graduated from Nib High School in 1984? Uh, yeah. Who's this? Um, this is uh, Billy Madison. You probably don't remember me, but I, I went to high school with you. Um, I, I kind of gave you a hard time back then, and I did some things that I thought were funny at the time, but now I realize they were just mean and, and stupid, and I uh, just wanted to apologize, and I hope you forgive me. Yeah, sure. Don't worry about it. It's no problem. Wow, well, that's great. Um, well, I am sorry, and uh, maybe we can get together sometime and, uh, and have some coffee or something. Sure, I'd like that. Okay, well, uh, I'll see you around. Okay. Bye. So he says, you remember somebody that has something against you. And then he says, leave your gift and go make things right. This is urgent. In recovery, uh, in Alcoholics Anonymous and Celebrate Recovery, step eight is to make a list of all persons we had harmed and become, became willing to make amends to them all. So when you think about it this morning, is there anybody on your list that is offended or angry with you? And Jesus says to leave your gift now and go make it right. Richard Rohr says when you move to higher states of love and transformation, you do not jump over the earlier stages, but must go back and rectify the earlier wrongs, or there will be no healing or open future for you or for those you've hurt. And he talks about redemptive listening so that when you go back, I'm not going to get into all the logistics of this, but just look it up. Look up if you want to do a search online for how to make amends and how to do that well. 
because there are ways to do this poorly, right? Hey, I'd like to get together and meet. I understand that you're upset at me, and I would like to explain to you why you shouldn't be upset. You really haven't understood, and so I'm trying to make things right. That isn't making amends, by the way. This redemptive listening involves listening to the person and their side and actually reflecting back to them that you hear what they're saying and then apologizing. I'm sorry. And the reason Jesus says to do it now is because we tend to put this off. Think about it. What would it be like if all the people just in this room, in their families and relationships, if the person that was coming to their mind or people that were coming to their mind this morning, if they took a step this week, maybe even today, texted somebody and just said, hey, haven't been in touch for a while, would love to grab coffee this week. Hey, I'd like to talk. Just think about what would happen. I came across a story of a guy who, his name is Alvin Strait. They made a movie about this guy. When he was 73, his brother, who was over 10 years older than him, had a stroke. And Alvin, Alvin, when he heard about it, he knew things were not right with his brother. They had not spoken to each other in over 10 years. And so he told his wife, I'm going to visit my brother and I'm going to make things right. Because I can't, I can't die with this on my conscience. I need to talk with him. Well, Alvin at 73 actually had had some issues and he'd lost his driver's license. His brother lived 500 miles away. And so Alvin gets out his John Deere riding lawnmower and puts a trailer thing on the back of it with camping gear and food and supplies and he starts the 500 mile journey on his riding lawnmower to reconcile with his brother. He didn't want anybody to know about it because this wasn't something to be publicized but of course it made it into the news. He had to go over the Mississippi River and so there's, you know, traffic is backed up and here's Alvin on his John Deere riding lawnmower with his trailer behind him. It broke down at one point and he had to get parts to fix it. And then for part of the journey, somebody loaded him up in the back of their pickup truck and, try and loaded everything up and helped him. But he went and he reconciled with his brother. Like I said, they made a mute movie about it in 1999 called The Straight Story. And I, I hear something like that and I go, man, what if we had that kind of desperation as followers of Jesus that we were going to make it right with people? Because we, we stop whenever there's any inconvenience. Oh, they didn't text me back. Right? Or they send back an emoji of hatred. And again, Jesus is talking here about who is there in your life that has a, they're offended at you, they're angry. And by the way, Jesus is not talking about people who have persecuted you for your faith. Earlier, he said, you know, people are going to say all manner of evil against you and accuse you of things because you're my follower. He's not talking about trying to make it right with somebody who wants, they want to kill you for following Jesus. But maybe there's something in the way you've approached them in your relationship with Jesus that has caused offense, and you can't apologize for that. But again, this is to humble ourselves. So are you willing with me today to just pray, take a moment and pray, and ask God to give us courage to respond? Are you willing to do that? And for those of you who have someone who's come to mind, can you imagine what we just looked at this morning in the, in the video portrayal of Jesus and those two boys? Can you imagine if every one of our children were taught this from an early age? And that's a whole different approach than stop fighting. 
and just yelling and screaming. Let's pray. Lord, this morning we're so desperately in need of you. We thank you that you, Jesus, are the one in this context that tells us to come to you. And Lord, anyone you've brought to mind this morning, we ask, God, that you give us courage in following through and healing and mending that fracture. Lord, would you come and bring healing in the name of Jesus. And this morning, if you're here and God's bringing a person to mind, or maybe more than one person, I want to invite you just to stand. I'm not going to ask you to come up. I'm not going to ask you to say who it is. I'm not going to interview you. None of that. This is, but I do want you to take a step of faith to just stand and say, God, I need your help in this and your strength. Okay? Just to stand up. Many of you, come on, you can admit it. And those of you that no one is offended at you in your life, <laughs> I don't know how that happens. Or maybe you've made things right with everybody, and that's a beautiful thing. Then I want to encourage you to be that instrument of peace and encouraging others to make peace. So, Lord, we pray now for everyone standing, and those of you standing, just close your eyes, open your hands, if you would, just as a sign before God of, I need you to help me in this. Lord, I pray you'd give each one courage to follow through. And, Lord, I pray you'd go before them with a person who's offended, who's angry, and I pray that you would prepare that person's heart, and I pray, Lord, the wall would come down. And, Lord, do what only you can do. And Lord, we just say too before you that if this person resists, if this person lashes out, if whatever this person does, God, we entrust it to you and pray you would stand between us and them and be our protector and be the healer in this relationship. Lord, would you make things right in Jesus' name. And would you give them courage to do it quick and not put it off in your name. Amen. Everybody stand.